An ammo company gets jammed up by police for a mask mandate, and then they say they will no longer sell to law enforcement. Stick by and watch this episode of Guns and Gadgets. Hey everybody, welcome back to Guns and Gadgets, your premier source for Second Amendment news, your Gundy Award winning source for Second Amendment news, I guess I can say. Thank you to each and every single one of my viewers out there who voted and kept voting. Uh, as a result, uh, this channel won the Breakout Creator of the Year Award from the Gundys. So thank you to everybody. It's a very humbling experience. As somebody who's not really huge on accolades, uh, it's surprising when somebody notices the channel. Um, so thank you all for making, making that happen. We are one huge family here, and uh, I depend on each and every one of you down below, hitting the thumbs up, spreading the news. Uh, also commenting, and uh, if you're new here, join this place. This is a this is the place to be. Let's talk about this issue that happened uh, in Michigan. So, if you aren't familiar with the governor of Michigan, uh, Gretchen Whitmore is a uh, a tyrant. You can Google everything you want on her with the COVID restrictions and stuff like that, and uh, the lawsuits, etc. Well, uh, this story is no different. So Phoenix Ammunition operates out of Michigan, the same place where the tyrant we just talked about is the uh, leader of the land. And uh, they've been they've challenged this mask mandate, have had a sign out on their business saying, you know, uh, we don't wear the mask, make your own decision, stuff like that. And they, as a result, got a visit from the police department. And I'm going to put this picture here on screen that they posted on their Twitter and it, uh, we'll read it real quick. It's also obviously from the Department of Health and Human Services, and it's a penalty notice for violation uh, of the November 15th emergency order. And this is dated Jan uh, January 11th, so last week, a little over a week ago. And it says, no, on November 15th, uh, this is the emergency order that was given by the tyrant queen. And then it says, the next paragraph, Phoenix Ammunition has violated the emergency order as follows. The establishment fails to require face masks in violation of this section, blah, 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 blah. On November 19, 2020, at 11.02, Officer Matthew Chalasic of the Novi Police Department was dispatched to Phoenix Ammunition, located there. The officer arrived at the establishment and observed a sign on the door that states, quote, we do not wear masks, make your own decisions, end quote. The officer entered the establishment and observed an employee behind the counter, later identified as the owner, helping a customer while not wearing a mask. My golly, the world must have ended. Now, Phoenix has also gone and tweeted on their Twitter that the officer uh, has, was dispatched due to an anonymous complaint by uh, some Karen and that they will no longer sell to law enforcement as a result of this. And I actually agree with that trend. I, I, I think that if you were to send a message uh, that way, uh, things would come back to normal a little uh, faster than some expect. What do I mean? Well, this is just one issue on uh, something from the Department of Health. Law enforcement, police, they're charged to enforce criminal statute, criminal law. And health departments don't write criminal law. So police who are enforcing an edict by a Governor Tyrant Queen and her health department cronies aren't actually doing what they're supposed to do. They have uh, taken an oath to uphold and defend the United States Constitution and the Constitution of their state and to protect the citizens thereof. And my my humble opinion, you could you could be different. That's fine. We can both be different, you know, on different pages here and and still be cool. But my humble opinion is that a police officer going out of their way to harass or even not even harassed but to make it difficult for a small business to operate the same small business who your salary and your uh, services in that town or city or whatever depend on just to doing doing that and making it difficult for them to operate in some places getting closed down it doesn't really doesn't really help the end goal i would say um, and it's just something that shouldn't be done. Police have discretion, and this is an area where discretion comes in. It could have been handled a totally different way. Could have been, all right, just could have been done differently. It didn't have to be uh, like this. So uh, I actually will go on record saying I agree with this type of response from Phoenix where they won't sell to law enforcement now. Let's take that from ammo and let's move towards something like firearms now. I'll use this state for an example, Massachusetts. Glock. Glock has a good, firm uh, footprint on law enforcement communities here, meaning that most departments carry Glock in mass. 
And, but Massachusetts has a ridiculous um, attorney general hidden list that she won't show where even guns that are on the approved firearms roster, like the Queen approves you to have these things if you want to buy them, uh, you can't get some of them even though they're on that list. Sounds stupid. But for instance, you can buy a Gen 1, 2, or 3 Glock in Massachusetts uh, through an FFL, but you can't buy a Gen 4 or 5. Why? Because they made a small internal you know, change. They upgraded some things. Uh, it's a different skew. But it's not any more deadly, yet that's the silliness that takes place. It's all bureaucratic red tape. So what if Glock were to say, you know what, I'm not selling to Massachusetts anymore. How fast do you think that would change? Now let's say they took that and did it to every state. How fast do you think things would get back a little bit more normal? I think it would happen rather quickly. So that's why I support Phoenix Ammunition's decision not to sell to law enforcement anymore. Because law enforcement, in my opinion, overstepped their bounds, enforced a health order, and in turn made it difficult for this, this business to operate. So, uh, question of the day. What do you guys and gals think about this? I'd love to hear your comments down below. Uh, I understand that I'm not the only person in the world, and my opinion is just that. Mayan. You know, each and every person in law enforcement out there should pass the man or the woman in the mirror test each and every single day and do the righteous thing. And by going into a business and making it difficult for them to operate when all they're trying to do is run their business so they can feed their kids, pay their mortgage, that ain't the righteous thing. But that's just me. Let me know what you think down below. And if you haven't subscribed to this channel, please do that. Because the bigger we are, the more the word gets out. And this is where you're going to find all of the Second Amendment news, no matter where it happens, good, bad, ugly, or indifferent. Usually every single day, sometimes several times a day. And please hit the thumbs up. It makes a huge difference. Share this with everybody you know and comment down below. And I would love to see you join the channel. Until we see each other again, be safe, stay vigilant, carry a weapon. I'll see you on the next one. What do you think about that sunburn? Good, huh? <laughs> That's from Texas. Take care, everybody.